Good morning, modern steaders. Hear that? Yeah, we got a bunch of rain last night that turned into ice. And it's still raining right now. Look at Gina's car. <sighs> That's all ice. I'm gonna start this, gonna have to start it up, let it warm up for a while. I think that's gonna take a little while to defrost this morning. Be very careful, it's icy. That goes for you too, Tanner. You're making a lot of noise there, girl. Yeah, there's a gecko in here. Yeah. What are you doing, Tanner? What do you think of the ice? It's like, I don't like this leash, that's all I know. Have a good day at school. Here comes the boss. Let me get Tana's leash. You stay over here, man. <laughs> you don't need to get squished. Bye, Bill. Bye, Bill. Have a good day. See you tonight. There she goes, Tana, off to school. Oh, you don't want to leave now? Your friend left you? Tana, it'll be okay. She'll be back. It'll be okay. She'll come back. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on in, girls. And roosters. It's gonna be a warm one today, guys. It's supposed to be high of 45 degrees today. We haven't had it that long in a few months. It's gonna be nice. Right now it's 32 degrees out. That is a heat wave for us at this point. The raspberry spread we made. So delicious. That's good. Really good. It's melted quite a bit. like a bubble. <laughs> Look at that, it's like a layer of air underneath it. Oh, that's funny. It's all cleaned off for you. It's very slippery, careful. Have a good day. You too. Love you. I should probably put my ice cleats on right now, but I don't feel like it. So I'm hoping that we don't fall. We got kind of some crunchy snow under us, so I think we'll be good today. Mm. 
Good layer of ice, that's for sure. Change out your water. You hungry? No? Want breakfast? You hungry for some alfalfa pellets this morning? I take that as a yes, Blossom. You're eating a lot of your seaweed. How are you doing on the goat minerals? Well, you've had some goat minerals. Come on, Willow. Is this gonna be our last day milking? I have a feeling it's either gonna be today or one day coming up this week. It's gonna be your last day of milking. I didn't get much out of you the other day. Maybe another day or two. Not much. It won't be long and we won't be milking. If you got any of this nasty ice weather, hope you guys made out okay. So far we haven't lost any power. I don't want to jinx ourselves. You ready Willow? No, it's not a good treat. There you go. Go ahead, go out, Blossom. Come on out. It's your last flake of hay that you don't like. And put some alfalfa pellets on it. And then we'll get you a new bale. Hopefully you like the next batch of hay. Take a little bit of milk. Blah, maybe enough for half of a cup of coffee tomorrow. Take our milk inside, get it filtered, and then we'll go feed Moose and the ladies of New York City. You're staying out, you're gonna come back in. Do you know what you wanna do? I don't think he likes running on the ice. He's being cautious for himself. Go for it. Pluto, come on. Let's go to New York City. Careful on the ice. Seems like it was a lot brighter outside this morning. We must be gaining on our daylight time. You ladies have a good night. There you go. Not seen any eggs yet. Right in front of the doorway, it's getting pretty slippery. Oh, we do, we got one egg. The lady, one of the hens was sitting on it and hiding it. Hope you enjoy the warmer weather today. I feel like we want to go out, but we don't want to get on the snow. I'm not sure why I didn't think of this sooner for the chickens, but I think I have an idea that'll help the chickens lay more eggs and their yolks will stay a nice dark orange. That bucket's the bucket I store our chaff hay in. We had chaff hay in it all last year, so the bucket was smelling a little funky. So I wanted to clean it out, put a little bit of bleach water in there, clean it out, rinse it, and we'll put this chaff hay in there once it dries out. But what I was thinking is, 
We feed our goats chaff hay sometimes, and chaff hay is fermented alfalfa hay. And my guess is the chickens are gonna love it in the wintertime when they can't eat fresh grass. This will give them the green in their diet. This should help make their eggs a lot. This should help make the yolk of their eggs a lot more orange. So, I picked up a bag. I'm gonna try feeding it to them and see how they like it. Let me bring you in close. So it's chopped up, ground up alfalfa hay. The molasses that help it ferment. So we're gonna give this to the chickens and see if it affects their egg laying production and the quality of their eggs. And I also picked up a 50 pound bag of organic whole corn. My guess is they're gonna love it. Leave it in the comments down below and let me know what you think. Are they gonna like the alfalfa hay and the whole corn, one or both? It's gonna be interesting to see. I'll have to do a comparison on the eggs afterwards to see if their yolk color changes. Got you a treat. Let's see what you think. Does that smell different? They're like, what is it? You don't want it? I bet you're gonna love it. Might take you a minute or two. All right, we'll grab the eggs while we're in here. There we go. It's gonna take them a little while to get used to the smell and they'll go over and check it out. They did just have breakfast a few hours ago, so they might not be that hungry. We'll come back in a little bit and we'll check in on them. One of my friends was telling me how he's able to clean his chimney from the ground, and if he didn't have this product, he'd have to get up on his roof, clean it, take his chimney apart inside and clean it, and he was saying, using this product, he's able to do it all from the ground, in the house, without any issues. So he's like, if you want, I'll drop it off and you can try it. So today we're gonna try it out. I think any product that makes it so you can clean your chimney quick and easy throughout the winter is a must have. We designed our house so we can have our chimney on the outside of the house so we can clean it multiple times throughout the winter and keep a clean chimney and that way we don't have to worry about chimney fires. On a nice warm day like today, I like to take advantage of it and I like to kill the wood stove, get it burnt out, cool down, then we can clean our chimney. We burnt about a cord to two cords of firewood since last time we cleaned it. I normally just use a fiberglass or a plastic bristle brush. I have videos on that. I'll put a link below those videos right here. So this one, you put it on a drill. These sections are probably three feet long. You go up three feet and you add another section. He uses it and really likes it because he can bend it and go from the inside of his stove up and out and he doesn't have to get up on his roof. I'm curious to see if it does a better job or not than the brush that we have. So he was telling me if we take this apart in here, this is just weed eater string. So when it loses its length, you just put more string in it and you're good to go. So let's try it out today and see how it works. This can usually be a pretty dirty job. It's not too bad, but you get pretty black. You get a lot of black sit on you, and it doesn't come off that easy. Off your clothes. This, this is usually the dirtiest part. Let's see how much creosote we have in there. Ready? Actually, that wasn't that bad. So let's stick this up, see how it works. Let's try to go inside. I think I'll grab my other brush. Let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison and see what we think. So he says he really likes it because it's very flexible and he can go up like a 90 where these, where the other brushes he can't. 
I don't know, it seems to have good flex. Yeah, this is a little more bendable. Yep. It bends easier. This one will bend. You just gotta put a little more pressure on it. Let's keep going and we'll try this one some more. Bring it up to the camera, it's dirty down there. Right here, you push this in. So you push it in. Pull it off, okay. It's got a good bend to it. pot a lot faster than it does unscrewing all these I will say that I don't like having to put them on with a tool when I'm doing it I don't like having to use my drill because my drill gets covered in creosote if you had a cheapo extra drill wouldn't be a bad idea I do really like how they're coming apart I will say that Mine, the screw together ones, they come apart hard. Boom. So what are my final thoughts on this product? I think it works awesome. I don't like having to put them together as you're drilling and having a tool in your hand. You get your drill covered in creosote. It works really well. I don't, for my application, it doesn't work any better than this inexpensive, cheap, easy brush. For some reason, I had to get on my roof with this brush, and this one I could do it on the ground. Yes, it is totally worth it. We designed our house around our wood stove so we could put the chimney outside for this particular reason, so it would be easy cleaning. But this is a great option if you have to get on your roof. You can run it right up inside your stove and up the chimney, which is awesome. I think for different applications, this is the right tool. If you have an outside one that you can get to, this is your right tool. It's inexpensive, it's cheap, it's easy. I'm just a cheap, easy kind of guy, I guess. If I can get the job done with a quick, easy tool, I like it. I do like the mating system of these when you put them together. They're just a little push in. Yeah, with gloves on, you can't do it that easy. I'll get it. So you just push it in, and the pin lines up and goes in. I don't want to put it in because I already put the tool away. But then you pop the pin, and you pull it out. That, taking it apart, is a lot easier. With mine, you got to oh, screw them, and you get all this creosote in there so they get dry. If you could do this on a brush, I think that'd be ideal for our situation. They are very flexible, look at this. And this is where they're gonna come in handy. If you have some bends that you need to get into, that is awesome. I get soot on my nose, yeah, look, I got soot all over my nose. <sighs> Can you make it? Oh, you're sinking. goats like this hay better.
it's like 45 degrees out. It's a heat wave. Since Olivia doesn't want to ride in the sled, I guess we will. Look at all the fun you missed out on. Come on, get in. Okay, well, get on. Get on, you gotta get on. Here comes oh, Pluto. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, you were so close. Oh, oh there, there they go. Out. Pluto. Go. Yep. Go for it. <laughs> go. Are you serious? Well, like, look at that. <laughs> Hey, let me get it out. Quick, the chicken. <laughs> Watch out. There, maybe you'll like this hay better. No, you don't like it. I don't like Pluto. Is that better? You like that hay? think so. That sun feels good. Is that hay better, girls? I hope you enjoy it. Let me get in. Hold on. You can pull me up the hill. I said, hold on, let me get in. No, she won't. We'll dump this out right here for them so tomorrow they'll come out and I bet you they're gonna love it. Oh, they're gonna love this tomorrow. The sun will be setting soon, so I'm not gonna let them out tonight. <laughs> Look at that, you ate it all. Awesome. Just a little bit of corn and a small amount of chaff hay. Do you ladies like it? You got one egg. One more egg. So it's six today. I've been getting quite a few reports lately about people's chicken coops being broken into by a fisher cat or a weasel. So I think it's the time of the year and all the critters out there are getting pretty hungry, so. That's why I don't want to let the chickens out this late in the day. Today we're going to roast up a couple of pork roasts with some roasted veggies. So I'm going to chop up one stalk of celery, three carrots, and then four potatoes, an onion, and a couple of cloves of garlic. For starters, we need to spray down our pan. Makes it a lot easier when we're going to clean up. If you forget, you'll regret it when you're washing your pan. I'm just using a glass 9x8, 9x11x9, something like that. We want to make a nice bed for the roast to sit on. Do three potatoes for now. We'll chop up our onion. See how much room we got left over after. Give everything a little toss, get it all combined together nicely. Gotta drizzle it with a little bit of avocado oil. Sprinkle a little bit of Himalayan salt on top of it. About a teaspoon. 
I'll give it another little toss. Get a little bit of salt, pepper, thyme, and a chopped up bay leaf in here. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of flour to that, mix it up. Then I'm gonna mince up two cloves of garlic. Right into that mix. Bada boom, bada bing. Oh, I love fresh garlic. We have two pork roast here. These are from pigs that we raised on pasture right here at the homestead and we harvested them and butchered them right here. It's been a fun little side project to be learning is butchering. There's quite a bit to that art. So I've had them in the fridge to frosting. Now I want to coat them with a little bit of our mixture here. Just rub it all over it. The side that has the most fat on it, that's the side we're gonna keep up, so that way all those fat juices when they're cooking runs down into the meat, gives it more flavor. Set it right on top of the veggies. We're gonna use the rest of our mixture on this pork. Rub it on there. This piece has got a nice fat back on it. That'll be up. Coat it. That crust looks so nice. Just the other day I had two different friends tell me that their chicken coop tried getting broken into. One of them had a weasel get into his coop. It wasn't a good outcome for the chickens. And then another one has a fisher cat trying to get into his chicken coop. And a fisher cat is a mean, mean, mean little animal. It's kind of, it's in the same family of a wolverine. They're just mean critters. So luckily that didn't get in yet. Hopefully he catches that and it doesn't get into the coop, but it's time to be more vigilant and keeping our eyes open for predators around the chicken coops. Uh, it's that time of the year, at least for us here in the North Country. We got a lot of snow and small game is hard to find for those guys. So if you guys have chickens, keep an eye on them. I know we're gonna be. I'm interested to see how it plays out feeding the chickens chaff hay. They're gonna have to keep their eggs separate and then we'll have to do like a side-by-side -side comparison in like a week and see if it makes a difference or not. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us. You guys are a true blessing to our family. We're surely glad that you're here with us and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.